الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شحل صدري ويسل أمري وحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a yet another exciting course from Team Sifia. This course content has been created under the guidance of Sheikh Mir Asadullah Qadri and I am a member of Team Sifia, going to be your trainer today. Together, you and I will go into this exciting journey of learning about this important concept of Sahih Iman. So, welcome aboard. Iman and Good Deeds this course content is divided into the following lectures. Introduction There are three distinct stages in Islam. That is, first, faith in heart, Iman. Second, deeds by limbs, Islam. And third, complete attention towards Allah, the Sabbuf, Ihsan. If someone does good deeds without Iman in his heart, he will not be treated as Muslim. If a person has Iman in his heart but is involved in sins, he will be called a sinner. If a person has Iman in his heart and also does good deeds only for the sake of Allah and his Apostle he will be called a true believer and a person of Ihsan. There are differences of opinions of scholars on the issue of Iman and good deeds. Some say belief and good deeds together are Iman. Some say that Iman and good deeds are different from each other. This course discusses this issue in detail in the light of Quran, a hadith and opinions of Aimma. Iman in heart If a person believes in heart that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad wasallam is Allah's apostle and surrenders himself to the will of Allah, meaning decides to obey Allah and Prophet Muhammad wasallam, as per the teachings of Quran and Sunnah, he is Muslim for all practical purposes. If the person does not believe in Shahada in his heart, he is not Muslim. If a person believes in heart and also proclaims the Shahada by his tongue, this is better. If a person immediately after proclaiming Shahada also starts fulfilling Islamic obligations like learning or doing salah, fasting, giving charity, zakah, etc. This is still better. A person who is good at Iman, belief and Islam deeds. His example is of a person who is wearing minimum Islamic dress along with the required undergarments. If a person is excellent in his deeds and as per Prophet ﷺ's commandments, doing all his deeds seeing Allah from his eyes, he comes under the category of Ahsan. His example is the person who is wearing the traditional Islamic dress along with the Amama, Imama. He is the person of Ahsan. If a person wears a gown, goes to a place or mosque where minimum Islamic dress is required and then goes naked where naked people are allowed, his example is that of a hypocrite, Munafiq. Some people may object that the Sheikh has given a strange example to explain issues. They should know that there is nothing bad or good in explanations. We have to choose an example with which the issue is understood by one and all easily. If they still feel not comfortable, they should read the following hadith. It is in hadith. Ummul Mumineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated that the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the people will be gathered barefooted, naked and uncircumcised on the day of judgment. I said, O Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will the men and women look at each other? He said, the situation will be too hard for them to pay attention to that. Bukhari Therefore, it is a good idea to understand the issue in its proper perspective rather than paying attention towards the examples given. If a person is wearing only clothes, that cover half of his upper body and not wearing anything down from his waist, he will be called naked, even though half of his body is covered with costly clothes. 
This is the example of the followers of Muslim sects or groups whose deeds may be good but whose basic faith is not correct. The good deeds of these people will not help them in any way on the day of judgment. This is the reason Prophet Muhammad said, Out of 73 sects, only one will get salvation and the rest will be thrown into hellfire. If a person chooses to cover his body only from the belly button to knees in a towel in front of the people but does not care much about covering his body parts fully as per the Islamic dress in spite of the fact that he is financially capable to buy all kinds of clothes. His example is that of a person who has bare minimum Iman but he does not have much good deeds or probably he is a sinful person. Fasiq. It is in Hadith. It is narrated by Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Whoever said there is no God except Allah and has his heart good, faith equal to the weight of a barley grain will be taken out of hell. And whoever said there is no God except Allah and has in his heart good faith equal to the weight of a wheat grain will be taken out of hell. And whoever said there is no God except Allah and has in his heart good faith equal to the weight of an atom will be taken out of hell. Bukhari What is the meaning of Iman equal to the weight of barley grain, wheat grain, mustard seed or an atom? This is described in the following hadith. It is in hadith. The Apostle of Allah wasallam said, Whoever among you sees an evil, un-Islamic action, let him change it with his hand by taking action. If he cannot, then with his tongue by speaking out. And if he cannot, then with his heart by at least hating it and believing that it is wrong. And that is the weakest of faith equal to the weight of a grain or atom. Muslim The following hadith clarifies three distinct stages in Islam. That is, first, faith in heart, Iman. Second, deeds by limbs, Islam. And third, Complete attention towards Allah, the Sabuf, Ahsan. It is in Hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that one day while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the company of some people, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came and sat and asked, What is Iman? Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Iman is to believe in Allah, his angels, the meeting with him, his apostles, and to believe in resurrection. Then he further asked, What is Islam? Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, To pray Allah alone and none else, to offer prayers perfectly, to pay the compulsory charity, zakat, and to observe fasts during the month of Ramadan. Then he further asked, What is Ihsan, the Sawwuf? Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, To pray Allah as if you see him. And if you cannot see him, then you must consider that he is looking at you. Bukhari, Muslim and others. It is in Hadith, Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that once Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu was along with Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa as a companion rider. Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa said, O Mu'ad bin Jabal, Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied, Labbaik and Sadaik. O Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Mu'ad, Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu said thrice, Labbaik and Sadaik. O Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is none who testifies sincerely that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's Apostle except that Allah will save him from the hellfire. Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, O Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, should I not inform the people about it so that they may have glad tidings? He replied, When the people hear about it, they will solely depend on it. Then Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated this hadith just before his death, being afraid of committing sin by not spreading the knowledge. Bukhari, Book 3, Hadith number 130. The above a hadith clearly establish that to believe in heart is sufficient for a person to be declared Muslim and he becomes eligible to enter paradise.
All right, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. Imam's Opinions Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad at tahabi 843-935, was a famous Islamic scholar who followed Hanafi school of thought. He is famous for Aqidah at tahabiyah a treatise on Aqidah that has been accepted by all four schools of thought, Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, and Hanbali. Both Imam al maturidi and at tahabi said, Iman, faith, consists of conviction in the heart and affirmation by the tongue. Imam al maturidi declared on the authority of Imam Abu Hanifa that the foundation of belief consisted only in conviction in the heart. The tongue's affirmation is a supplementary, integral or pillar. Rukn Zaid The other three Imams, Malik, Shafi and Ahmad ibn Hanbal said that Islamic belief consists of conviction in heart, affirmation by the tongue and practice with the limbs. We believe that all Imams are correct. We can understand their rulings as follows. When we take Iman as conviction in heart, then Imam Abu Hanifa's statement and the statement of Imam at tahabi is correct. When we consider the best deeds of a human being, then the first thing that comes to our mind is Iman, faith, which is followed by other deeds. In this case, Iman becomes part of all good deeds or all good deeds become part of Iman. First, it is in Hadith. It is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, What is the best deed? He replied, To believe in Allah and his Apostle Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The questioner then asked, What is the next in goodness? He replied, To participate in jihad in Allah's cause. The questioner again asked, what is the next in goodness? He replied, To perform Hajj, Mabrur, pilgrimage to Makkah, which is accepted by Allah, and it is performed with the intention of seeking Allah's approval only, and not to show off, and without committing a sin, and in accordance with the traditions of the Prophet. Bukhari, Book 2, Hadith 25. Second, it is in Quran, it is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards east or west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the apostles to spend of your wealth out of love for him, for your kin, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask and for the ransom of slaves, to be steadfast in prayer and practice regular charity to fulfill the contracts which you have made and to be firm and patient in pain or suffering and adversity and throughout all periods of panic. Such are the people of truth, the Allah-fearing. Al-Bakhra 177 Third, it is in Hadith, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam is based on five principles. First, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's Apostle. Second, to offer Salah, prayers, dutifully and perfectly. Third, to pay Zakat. Fourth, to perform Hajj. Fifth, to observe fast during the month of Ramadan. Bukhari, 
book 2 hadith number 7 fourth it is in hadith it is narrated by abdullah bin umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that once allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by an ansari who was admonishing to his brother regarding haya on that allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam said leave him as haya is a part of iman bukhari book 2 hadith number 23 why professing of shahada by tongue as well as other good deeds are separated from iman in the heart it is because there are certain circumstances for people when they cannot profess iman openly fearing danger to their lives this provision will help them to get salvation on the day of judgment when a person can profess shahada openly by his tongue and there is no threat to his life then he should do it openly if he does not do it then his case is for allah to decide on the day of judgment it is in hadith it is narrated by abu dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said jibril alayhi salam said to me whoever said there is no god except allah among your followers and die will enter paradise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked even if he has committed illegal sexual intercourse or theft he replied even then bukhari book number 54 hadith number 445 the above hadith emphasizes the importance of iman over deeds however we should not think that being muslims we can commit sins remember habitual or deliberate sinners are walking on the outer ring road of islam bordering kufr separating religion from day to day life or deliberately insisting on committing sins or making fun or mockery of established laws of sharia or making fun or mockery of real muslims are very serious issues that should not be taken lightly the angels are recording every action watch out you will not even know when you were declared as non muslims by allah's appointed angels when a person commits the sin and considers that what he has done is wrong deplorable and he should not repeat it or correct himself as soon as possible then he remains muslim followers of deviant sects disrespect insult prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family members and other dignitaries of islam and insist that what they are doing is right these actions take them far away from islam the only possible way for these sects to come back to the fold of islam and get salvation is they should repent and renounce their wrongful beliefs and deeds and come back to the straight path of islam if someone declares a muslim as grave worshipper or makes fun of his islamic faith and mislead innocent muslims to take them away from the straight path of islam and declares himself to be muslim then he along with his followers will be treated as hypocrites munafiqeen on the day of judgment similarly there are some faith healers amini in society who take the assistance of the souls of stars trees shayateen etc and mislead people claiming themselves as sufi babas and pious muslims these faith healers apparently have no iman in their hearts in addition there are some look alike sufis in society who take advantage of innocent people in the name of the sawwuf people should identify such people and keep themselves away from them all right this concludes the lecture before you go you can find more information of many other islamic topics like the one we discussed in this course at sahiiman.com/books hundreds of books available explaining multiple islamic topics up for grabs for free so do check it out thank you for signing up for this course we hope you had a great time learning about this important topic as we had preparing this course for you see you again for another exciting learning experience at the correct islamic faith international academy until then it's goodbye from us at team sifia <laughs>